Hi guys, my name's Will Mazingo. I'm glad you're with us. We are going to do a little Bible study here. We are going to talk Ecclesiastes, and we're going to be in 413 through 57. Let's go ahead and say a prayer, then we'll read those verses. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this, this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, help us to get something out of this reading today, and just looking over things. You just sometimes show us things, sometimes we overlook. Help us to get what we need out of reading, and be able to... Somehow you just touch us as we know you will throughout the week. There's so many people sick this week. Please help them. So many people who's had surgery recently. We know a lot of them who's come through, but still in recovery. And the whole world's in recovery, especially going through all this sickness and COVID and confusion. And you know what we say about confusion. That's usually got the devil's hand in it. So let's get you to unconfuse, clear up, make us all know, have the knowledge we need. Of course, we have to listen for that but find what we need that you want us to do and then do it, getting people to you and just be with us and bless us. Let us be comforted and know that you never leave us. It's us who go astray. Help us throughout this week. We need strength, energy, and guidance more than ever. Again, be with anyone who's sick. Let them know that you're with them. Let them know you're there and somehow use anything that goes wrong, maybe in any shape or form, any large scale of any kind throughout the world, twist things around. So even some things going the wrong way can bring out glory where you come through. You can change anything. You're always with us. But thank you for everything. Strength, energy, and guidance again. In your name sake we pray. Jesus, amen. Amen. All right. Like I said, uh, if you guys actually have any requests, feel free to always shoot us a message or email us. And we'll be glad to um, talk with you about that, especially about things that we're talking about today. If you see something you don't understand or would like to talk about, feel free to message or comment. Again, uh, we're going to be, let's go ahead and look it up here. I think somebody's already got it. It's Ecclesiastes, and we're going to go through 413 through 57. So let's just go ahead and read that. Better is a child that is poor and wise than a king that is old and foolish, who knoweth not to foresee for hereafter. Because out of prison and chains, sometimes a man cometh forth to a kingdom, and another born king is consumed with poverty. I saw all men living that walk under the sun with the second young man who shall rise up in his place. The number of the people of all that were before him is infinite, and they that shall come afterwards shall not rejoice in him. But this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Keep thy foot when thou goest into the house of God, and draw nigh to hear. For much better is obedience than the victims of fools, who know not what evil they do. Speak not anything rashly, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter a word before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Dreams follow many cares, and in many words shall be found folly. If thou hast vowed anything to God, defer not to pay it. For an unfaithful and foolish promise displeaseth him. But whatsoever thou hast vowed, pay it. And it is much better not to vow than after a vow not to perform the things promised. Give not thy mouth to cause the flesh to sin, and say not before the angel, There is no providence, lest God be angry at thy words and destroy all the works of thy hands. Where there are many dreams, there are many vanities, and words without number. But do thou fear God. If thou shalt see the oppressions of the poor, and violent judgments, and justice perverted in the province, wonder not at this matter, for he that is high hath another higher, and there are others still higher than these. Hmm. That is a lot of reading today. <laughs> I'm sure we've probably picked up on different things. First of all, um, just a reminder who's writing this and who we're talking about. We got, well, we got one of the wisest kings and people still known today. I believe everybody looks at it that way. That's King Solomon. Um, we're in this section and 
he's given information where we're dealing with that famous phrase and we're talking vanity, right? Mm -hmm. What's the point to life? Mm -hmm. That's kind of where we still kicking when we're in this whole section of the Bible. And honestly, I want to know one person who's not been kicking that in their life at some point in time or another. Yeah. Right? Right. And there's some pretty bold statements here. Oh, I would say so. Um, I was going to have you guys start by talking about stuff that, um, well, different things in life whenever you were little or maybe if you have kids and they do different things. And, and I was going to have you share things that went wrong and there was a reason for that. But instead, I, I, I kind of want to ask you just one question because I think everybody can picture it in their mind. I'm going to tell you a story instead. You see... I know one thing, when I was little, I used to go to grandma's house and we'd always spend the afternoon there. And as we were there, oftentimes she would cook or do things and we'd play games on the porch, we'd run around, we'd do, well, you'd do what kids did, you know, you'd just play. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows how they play, come on, I'm sure everybody when they were little did something, some of us threw mud in the air, some of us threw a football, some of us... Did, I don't know. We've done a lot of things, I'm sure. Sports for some of us, but especially at a younger age, you get the idea. You just kind of did whatever came to mind or what somebody else told you to do, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you a little secret. <laughs> Grandma used to tell me uh, not to do certain things. And she would want me, like, for example... She caught me many times putting my hands in the, in the cookie jar because I couldn't resist a warm cookie. She knew dinner was coming and it wasn't a good idea to eat. She also knew it would make me sick or it might would even burn my, my, it might burn my hand because I was touching the stove. But, you know, out of everything you hear, things like, uh, well, you should have listened. Have y'all ever heard that phrase? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got a better one for you. How about go get a switch? Okay. All right. Maybe I'm old school. I'm telling my age a little bit. But when grandma said go get a switch, you went and got one. All right. And it was because you did something wrong. And she didn't do anything bad or anything. I, I understand that now. But as a kid, it just scares you to death. Right. You got to fear of grandma in you. Right. <laughs> Now, anyway, you basically have them doing what they need to do. She's telling me that I'm being punished because I shouldn't have put my hand in that jar and started eating them cookies. And she knew what was going to happen later on, but that's another story, too. Anyways, I'll tell you knowledge off of that one. I learned real quick to listen to Grandma because if I not only listened to her, I wouldn't have to go looking for a switch. But I'll tell you another secret. I learned to get a big enough switch or she was going to go pick one for me. <laughs> Uh-huh, yeah. No, that she, was bigger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was gonna, I was going to get taught the lesson one way or another. But you know what? Even whenever I would do that, I would actually sometimes get away with, with sometimes sneaking that extra cookie or doing things. I'd burn my hand on the stove. I'd burn my tongue on the cookie. Or I'd eat too many of them. And yeah, I'd end up sick. Guess who knew all of that to begin with? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like everything else. So, but it's funny, I learned quicker than anything to get that bigger switch and to also listen. I swear that's one thing you didn't want to do was to make her go twice on you and say, now boy, I told you to go do this and you done messed up again. Now, you don't, you don't want to mess with parents and some of us are parents ourselves now. I'm not, but I know a lot of people who are and I'll tell you, you how many times have you had a kid that they did something that wasn't what you were planning on doing? That you told them not to do or you explained to them and you really wish they were listening to you in regards to what was going on. And you just, you know that they needed to listen to some kind of warning and perhaps they didn't. Then you have to talk about what you're going to do about it or if you have to be there. Or you usually have your reasons for telling them not to do it in the first place. Right. As we go through life, we get more wise and we try to pass that on, right? Right. But there's another thing. If... If you're not listening to people who's more wise, you're not paying attention, especially the kids in this case, listening to their parents. Well, you don't obey your parents and the Lord and listen to the ones that know better. It probably is the same reason they're telling you not to do that thing. You're going to find out a harder way 
why you shouldn't do it. Like in my case with the cookies, I got real sick. Or I would burn my hand. So, and yes, insult the injury. I learned also about the switch. So, <laughs> a little bit of everything there. But you get the ideas. You, you're going to be more wise and learn the warnings as you go through different things. And I'm going to tell you. King Solomon seemed to do the same thing. Um, being a wise person, we need to heed his warnings. And if you pay attention to some of these verses, you, you're going to start picking up really through the whole Ecclesiastes. But past mistakes and, um, well, things that would happen in regards to counseling and, well, even the counselors are godly counselors that we need to pay attention to and boy I tell you there's something we need to really go into that today um, don't be making promises or pretending to do something just to get away with something or because you think you're doing what's right when you're doing what's wrong don't, uh, put, don't put on a show for God because he can see right through it ah you see where we're going with it I see okay so a couple of you paying attention now it's really something to pay attention to because it's very important to listen to the warnings and, and things that come from past mistakes. So, uh, Solomon's reflecting on the whole meaning of life, and I'm not trying to put him on a special pedestal more than any of us because the truth of the matter is in your own time, you can learn from your parents, You can learn, and we hope our kids learn from us. I'm sure we've made lots of mistakes that we know in our lives. You can even learn from other people and their mistakes. Exactly. But like I said, I'm sure we can learn a lot from our own personal mistakes in life. And in doing so, I would hope you kind of book that up the knowledge and even share it in the case of your kids, right? Absolutely. Well, I'm grateful that, you know, when you pay attention to this, you're going to get it from different people, especially young and old. In this case, we're going to read. I want somebody to pull it back up. And if you look at 4, 13 through 16, and that's in Ecclesiastes again. I want this time kind of kind of listen to how Solomon is um, compared to, and you get the old and the young. Well, just pay attention to the teachable side and what's going on. Better is a child that is poor and wise than a king that is old and foolish, who knoweth not to foresee for hereafter. Because out of prison and chains sometimes a man cometh forth to a kingdom, and another born king is consumed with poverty. I saw all men living that walk under the sun with the second young man who shall rise up in his place. The number of the people of all that were before him is infinite, and they that shall come afterwards shall not rejoice in him. But this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Well, there you go. Anybody comments on any of this? You see in what I'm saying about Solomon and how he's, what he's saying here at all? Yeah, I think he, that there's an assumption by most people that with age comes wisdom. We hear people say that all the time. And, and Solomon's saying that uh, it's not always the case. And it's better for a, for a child to be poor and wise than it is for a, a rich man, in this case a king, to be old and foolish. And, you know, the, the man that's foolish doesn't sit down and think about what's coming next. And especially being old, he should really think about what's coming next because it probably won't be long before he meets his maker. Yeah, you know what? You just actually gave you a little more insight, too, because I'm going to give you all some homework. You'll write it down. I want you to go do this if you want to a little bit. This is a little activity for the week, okay? Anybody who wants to do it, I want you to kind of pull up and look separately for Proverbs 1631 and then I want you to go back to our favorite book that we've recently finished and go to Job 12 12 because if you go to those two verses I want you to kind of take a look at those and what I want you to do kind of in your own time is read through them and notice something there what I want you to do is I want you to pay close attention and see if you see what we've been talking about already in those verses. You're going to see a little similarity to what we've been talking about. And many times with the older people, 
wiser than the younger, like you said. So just for a little homework, you get a little time when you want, if you're looking for something to read, because it's good for us to read on a regular basis, even at home. Kind of pick up those verses and see what you come up with. And if somebody wants to share with me, you can online by commenting, or if you want to with us next week, you're more than welcome to do that. But it gives you a little homework. Go in that Bible and read some. Proverbs 10.31 and Job 12.12. See how there's some connection there. So, there we go. All right, well, now as we're moving on through here, you're seeing a lot of the, I think you're following us on everything we're doing with knowledge. There, I, there's so much knowledge sitting here. Let's jump over, and if you were to actually look at 1 Samuel 15, 22, and somebody else is going to read Ecclesiastes 5, 1 through 3 again. This time when we're reading it, just kind of pay attention to... Um, the admonitions of concerning worship and well we're going to kind of rephrase that a little bit after you read it but just listen to the worship and what's concerning it and these and so we can compare and contrast a little bit you think we can do that mm -hmm. all right what anybody got one open samuel fifteen twenty two. all right go ahead and read that one for me and samuel said doth the lord desire holocausts and victims and not rather that the voice of the Lord should be obeyed, for obedience is better than sacrifices, and to hearken rather than to offer the fat of rams. Okay, that is very interesting. Um, I, I wouldn't have thought to go to that originally. I was kind of reading through this, and when I got to that verse, it kind of, well, it kind of jumped out because does work with what we're talking about does anybody see how it's working a little bit already I yes. you, go ahead it's it's talking about offering holocaust and victims and sacrifices and is basically saying that if, if your sacrifice has no obedience behind it if there's no actions behind your words then it's all in vain it's as Solomon likes ah, to say, vanity of vanity. There you go. Somebody, you picked it up again. Yeah. You're, you're the head of the class this week, aren't yeah. you? <laughs> it's kind of funny, but it, it is true. We're, we're, again, he's trying to understand life. That's what our king's, that king's doing here. It's what many of us have done, I'm sure, throughout life. And we find that phrase again, and we start to get into that and see that. So... Now, if you jump back to what we were reading earlier and look at where we were in at 5, uh, 1 through 3, where we started today, and it says there that, uh, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Ha, ha, ha. I tell you, that's just verse 1. Hmm. But you already are connecting, aren't you? Be not rash with thy mouth. Let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business. And a fool's voice is known by multitude of words now if you can't get something like that out of this for you that's just flat out i need to pay attention and well really need to repent some i don't know what to say to you because i know i talk too much i can tell you that right now you have some of y'all saying yeah we know okay but you get the idea i'm serious we got a bad thing in fact many times in the bible you see that it talks about the tongue and let's face facts, we're talking about time. We were trying to figure out the purpose of it anyway when we're reading some of Solomon's words and things and vanity and things mm -hmm. that we've talked about. What's one thing about time that you definitely can't do? Can't get it back. Can't go back in time. Once it comes out your mouth, guess what? It's, it's sad. Too late. It's too late. Once you do something, it's done. Now, you can ask for forgiveness. You can do other things. But bingo, that's it. The tongue, the words. Oh, wow. You know what? The best thing to do if we can train ourselves to learn to be quiet. If we can learn ourselves to know when to talk. In other words, you don't have to not say words. 
But if it's not going to be wise in what you want to be remembered, just slow down. Think about it. And don't do it just to do it. I've really got a problem with this, and I think this verse that I just read really is highlighting it. So many times we get involved in life and we treat a day and our life as a permanent day in business. And I'm not talking about going to work, though that can be part of it. Mm -hmm. I'm referring to everything we do becomes a pattern. And it becomes a pattern in such that you want to do it, well, you may want to do it the best that you can. Some of us just don't care, but where we might be in depression. And in fact, that can lead to depression when you're trying too hard or whenever you see that you can't get it right. And then you set a goal and you don't finish it. Or years later you mm -hmm. say, I meant to do that, and then you didn't do it. And you turn around and all of a sudden, boom, time's gone. Mm -hmm. Okay, wait a second, but I've even talking short term. You go to church, you go different places, you're there, you're going to worship the way God wants you to worship, and you're supposed to do what you need to do. You were reading a little bit of that in Samuel, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're following different things, and, and you're doing certain things that... We know we're doing in the spirit, but I got a big question for a lot of us. I mean, this is huge, and it's probably how I'm going to close today talking about, because I think it might be one of the most important parts, and that is, are you doing rituals to just do them because everybody else is, or because it's a social gathering? I am so afraid that in this world, so many people are going to church just to meet people and have fun, and yes... You get to have fun. I'm not telling you not to have fun and socialize. I'm telling you that it seems to me, I see it in, in a lot of places where you just see it and hear of, you see and hear of churches and places that should be a worship and they start to become more of a business or a fun playground. Remember, when you get up to sing and worship God, yes, you're supposed to gather with believers. Mm -hmm. But if you're just getting up and clapping because the person next to you is, or to just say, yep, I'm here and it's a routine, are you really doing what church is meant for? Are you really doing that with any type of worship? If you're not going to do your job, then what's the point of doing it, right? right. Eventually you're going to get fired if it was a real business since that's how people want to act with worship sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You can't get away with that, can you? You have to have a little bit of heart in your job, like it or not, to be able to do the right job. What happens? Right. You got to commit to it and do your full and best or someone else is going to come along like the boss and fire you. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, your fear of being fired, well, that shouldn't be the reason for you to actually go back to do certain things. You should be wanting to do it because it is your job, what you're here for to do. And guess what? I'm going to throw this one right now at you. And it's very simple. Christ is no different. Um, if you're making promises or you want to do things, if you're supposed to go out and, and you wanted to do things like help at a, a elderly home or you want to do different things and you've committed to saying you're going to do certain stuff for God, maybe teach a class, watch the nursery, uh, go out and pick up food and take it to the homeless. I, I don't know what you might be doing or what God's working on your heart, but if you make a commitment to God, God is not going to like it if you kind of back out of it. You, you can't do that. If anything, you want to fear of being fired, I'll tell you, the one you don't want to ever be feared of firing and actually want to just stay fearful of, period, and want to serve because you want to please Him is the one that has the key to the real fire. I am not going to do my God wrong. I don't want to face him in judgment and have to explain it. Now, we all know it's a vicious cycle in life. Life has a tendency. It's the way it's made. You get in the cycle. We could talk about this all day. Oh, I planned on doing this. Then I got a new job. Oh, we had to move to this town. Oh, we had to do that. Well, I guess God didn't want us to do this. I guess God didn't want us to do that. You connect, you see, and things happen. Oh, I got sick. This is not what I wanted to do for a living. This is not this. This is not that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to happen. That's just a cycle. And once you actually do it and then reset your goals and try again, which I am challenging everybody to do this week also, look at your life. Have you promised God something that you're not doing? Are you being the Christian that you committed to when you got baptized? Say, did you surrender all or did you surrender part-time? There's no part-time Christians in heaven. Just so you know, there's that's not going to work quite, quite right. 
God's the only one who's going to be the judge. We can't judge. And on top of that, as if that isn't enough, we got to see what's happening with fear God. I don't know how else to say that more than anything. You should not make a promise and not keep it to anyone, but especially when it comes to God. And I'm not going to do that because I don't want to just not go to hell. I'm going to do that for the same reason. Remember I was talking about worship services and rituals. Mm -hmm. I might as well not even be there doing that if I'm there just to have a social gathering. It's going back to 5.4, it says it's better not to vow than after a vow not to perform the things promised. There you go. And that applies to worship. And you might as well not be there. If you're there purely for entertainment, you might as well just go to a rock concert instead. That's correct. Because you got you're it. there to worship God with your heart and your soul. I don't know if everybody's had this happen. I, I hope you have. But truth be told, if you really surrender to God, you're going to want to do as much as you can. And you're going to focus in. And if you would hush and listen, you're going to feel certain things that he's pushing you into. The first thing I think all of us are going to be pushed into, at least I know I was, it's no doubt one of our memory verses from before. Uh it's making sure that you're truly saved. If, you, if you're still a sinner, then you didn't get it right. Now, does that mean you don't commit sin? No, I need to back away because I make mistakes, you make mistakes, we all make mistakes. But I can't pretend to be a Christian and consciously make those mistakes. I need to always be trying my best to be like Christ. I need to always be following the law of God the best that I can to my ability. And anytime I mess up, I better very quickly take kind of a rain check and go, oh boy, did I mess this one up? And be down talking to God again, saying, Lord, I've messed up. There's a prayer out there that I think a lot of the, uh, well, a lot of saints and a lot of people say, and I rather like it because it has something to do with what we're talking about a little bit. It talks about how you um, basically are going to do stuff for God. And, well, there's a lot of prayers that do that. I tie it into John 3.16, first of all, because if you got it right, you know you have everlasting life and you know who died for you, right? Right. But I also tie it into you got to look at Lord, I'm wanting to do this for you too. Not just because I promised it or because it keeps me out of hell. When you're a Christian, you're going to have that heart where God's working on it. The Holy Spirit, you're going to feel it. I cannot explain the Holy Trinity. It's something that's going to remain a mystery to all of us. But know that it's real. That Holy Spirit's definitely there. And it's not the feeling that you're just having fun. No. We're talking about the spirit that can change people's lives. Including the people we should be praying for like the ones unsaved. And for the strength, energy, and guidance to carry through with promises we may have made to God or anyone. And you're going to notice something else too. When you pray with sincerity and you really mean it, you see your prayers answered more. Because that's what God's looking for. He doesn't want lip service. He wants a conversation where you're loving God. You're expressing knowledge of Him. You're on friendly terms with Him. And as you well know too, it's all through the Bible. If somebody wants to look at it when they're doing those little studies through the week. In Acts, I think it's 5-1, I want to say. somewhere. I know it's in Acts. But if you look at Acts, you're going to see a little more examples of uh, how... If you lie to God, there's serious consequences. Mm -hmm. Don't lie to God even if it's by accident. Do not make promises you cannot keep. Do not get caught up in the moment. If you feel like it's not a proper worship, if you feel like you're just there to be there, if it becomes just being something that's something because you're meeting a friend or there because a family that wants you there, that is the wrong reason to and be something's there. Something's not right. You can find God... In a backyard somewhere. 
He's anywhere and everywhere. I tell people that all the time. I give out crosses and go, I've been in stores and seen people that looked stressed and walked over to them and prayed with them. I've actually had them come to the car and ask me to pray for them. So you don't tell me that Holy Spirit doesn't work because he placed us in these people's paths, sometimes in parking lots of major department stores. And you need to listen as a Christian because guess what? That person, that might be their last chance to be saved. Or they may be praying for the very thing that as a Christian is what we're supposed to be telling people about with the Great Commission. That might be their chance to be saved. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to always pray for unsaved people. I'm always going to pray, Lord, forgive me. And I used that example, Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Great prayer. We start every one of our Bible studies that way. It's the Lord's Prayer. And I don't just say those words either. Because if I'm going to just say those words and don't know what it means, then guess what? I also shouldn't be praying. No. You pray to God and you have meaning to it. You'll feel the meaning when you accept the Lord Jesus in your heart and you commit to living to him, through him as a Christian. Lord, help us all this week to not only this week, but for always, time and forever on, our family, our friends, see you in us. Let them know that there's always ways to do something for you. While it's great to rejoice and you tell us to, it's even more better to watch ourselves and keep in check to make promises that we do keep and they be of you. That your will be done, not ours. For it's sin, very sinful. And there's consequences that, well, unimaginable consequences if we lie to you. Fearing you is the biggest fear in the world, but I don't want to fear you because I know what you can do. And boy, you can do a lot. You created us. You can do anything you want. Who am I to question you, just like Job said? But I do know something. You're the one that's got all the knowledge. You're the one letting me learn. You're the one who's told me how it's going to end up someday, as long as I follow the examples that you've given you're also the one who knows time much better than I do. So if I'm placed in someone's path, I need to be paying attention and not running off at the mouth or entertaining, but instead sincerely always looking for a chance to allow the spirit to do the job that needs to be done so that I can do whatever it is I'm a part of in surrendering all. Thank you for everything, God. Help it to be just a great week and help us continue to learn, bringing people to you. Strength, energy, and guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.